pre-renal and intra-renal failure. But what's the main difference? So let's just take a glance at what's happening really at the level of the nephron. So let's say here's our nephron, okay? Go like so. And let's say this is our afferent arterial. This is our efferent arterial. Okay, as we know, blood is moving this way, correct? And as blood moves down this way, this is known as my filtration, so GFR, correct? The blood arriving, right? The blood arriving to the uh, kidney is known as my renal blood flow. And after filtration, whatever's left over is known as my renal plasma flow. Please know the difference. Afferent arterial, renal blood flow, efferent arterial, renal plasma flow, okay? All right, let's continue. Well, what is it that's normally filtered? What is it that we like to measure uh, when, we, when we talk about filtration? Many times I like to mention creatinine. So link to creatinine, right? Creatinine is filtered. So as long as we aim, as long as we have high levels of filtration, our serum creatinine should be borderline normal to low, right? If we ever have some issue with filtration, then clearly my creatinine levels are going to rise. Make sense? Okay. Let's keep it moving. Let's say here's my nephron. Okay. And we're only looking at the level of the PCT, just throughout the entire length of the PCT. Okay. So let's say these are PCT. And coming off to the side of the PCT, what do we have? Right next to it. Well, the efferent arterioles actually end up feeding into uh, the PCT. It's known as the PTC, peritubular capillaries. Do not confuse them. PCT versus peritubular capillaries. So from the peritubular capillaries, what is it that, uh, that tends to happen? Well, we have some, this thing called bun, right? Bun. Bun, let's say it'll be found somewhere, eh, somewhere right around here. This bun tends to be secreted by the uh, PCT, and basically it's just saying that it's a, uh, a waste product, right? So let's say, now that we understand that bun, let me actually put that there, bun is secreted, right? Blood, urea, nitrogen. So I'll put that over here. Now that we understand that bun is secreted and that creatinine is filtered, Let's talk about the pre-renal versus intrarenal failure. So pre-renal failure, anything that decreases blood flow for whatever reason, decrease in Q, right, flow, anything that decreases perfusion, blood flow, volume, okay, to the, to the kidney would essentially uh, be considered a pre-renal failure. Uh, so maybe he's dehydrated. Maybe the patient has some sort of hemorrhage. Um, maybe they, it's a female with fibromuscular dysplasia. Uh, maybe it's a patient with polycystic kidney disease. Maybe they got lazy with the question stem and they just said in an experimental study, we got a rat and we clipped his renal artery. Same stuff. You see, the point is there's no blood flow. Now, not to mention there's also the effect of the renin angiotensinal aldosterone system, but we'll leave that for another video. For now, what I want you to understand is that if there is a decrease in blood flow, then how much filtration are we going to have? Exactly. Less blood flow, less filtration. If I have less blood flow, i.e. less filtration, what's going to happen to renal plasma flow? Exactly. It drops as well. So with that being said, with low blood flow, low perfusion, I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have a decrease in creatinine filtration. So my creatinine levels are going to have to increase. On that note, if I have less blood arriving to the efferent side, so renal plasma flow, if I have decrease in renal plasma flow, how much bun are we going to be able to secrete? More or less? Exactly, less bun. I cannot secrete any more bun. So my bun will also increase. So, average, uh, average bun and creatinine levels, okay? Average bun and creatinine, roughly, it's a 20 to 1 ratio, 20 to 1. What that means, guys, is that if creatinine increases to 2, guess what bun should be? 40. If creatinine increases to 3, what should bun be? Exactly, 60, right? Amazing math. Okay, so under normal circumstances, 
if a patient comes in with pre-renal failure, I'm going to have an increase of bun and an increase of creatinine, but they're both going to maintain the 20 to one ratio. What I want you to know is it's gonna be 20 or plus, 20 plus ratio, right? It could be more, it could be 25 to one, it could be uh, uh, 56 to two, it could be 75 to three, you see? So that's fine. The idea is as long as it's 20 to one or more, this is a pre-renal failure, okay? Now, what if we have intra? renal failure, right? Intrarenal failure. So let's say something at the level of the nephron. That's the first thing I want you to understand. Intrarenal failure is either going to be one of two things. Intrarenal failure is damage of the actual tubule itself, the nephron, or damage to the interstitium surrounding it. You see, off to the side. So it's either going to be the nephron itself or everything around the nephron. So if I have an intrarenal failure, I'm going to have uh, interstitial nephritis or tubular nephritis. So acute ATN and AIN. See the difference? ATN, let me put that over here. Acute tubular necrosis and acute uh, interstitial nephritis. They're both different. They're both just a different flavor of uh, intrarenal failure. Okay. Buzzwords for acute tubular necrosis would be things such as a muddy, muddy brown cast, looks like doo doo, right? Doo doo brown cast. And acute interstitial nephritis, the buzzword would be eosinophilic, eosinophilic uh, cast, eosinophilic cast, and or eosinophilia. Okay, so be on the lookout for both buzzwords. So now in interstitial, in acute interstitial nephritis and or, or better yet said in uh, intrarenal failure. Again, I said it's a damage of either the interstitium or the nephron, meaning is there any issue with GFR? Not really. So creatinine can be filtered. Is there any issue with bun? Not really, because bun can be secreted. So again, either way, we still have renal failure. My bun and creatinine will increase because eventually it's not going to be able to get past the, the damaged portion of the nephron. So they will increase. However, this is the trick, right? This is the gancho. So we will be saying Spanish. This is the trick. Bun is going to increase. So let's say bun, let's keep it here, 20 to 1. Uh, I'm sorry, creatinine is going to increase rather. So creatinine is going to increase to 2 and my bun Maybe it'll be at uh, 33. Creatinine increases to three, and maybe the bun is going to be, I don't know, let's say 47. Okay. So normal is 20 to one, and then it's going to increase. However, what I want you to notice is that if it's intrarenal failure, notice how it does not fit the 20 to one ratio. So if it's less than 20 to one, it's going to be intrarenal failure. If it's greater than 20 to 1, it's going to be pre-renal failure. Okay? All right, guys, I hope that helped.